Badass. Anybody know who this is? Judas Priest, thank you. I'm a heavy metal guy. <clears throat> I love heavy metal. I grew up in this stuff. Uh, the reason I chose the theme of badass is because it's a style uh, that's simple, direct, and functional, right? It's, it's instantly recognizable. It's like a chopped Harley, or it's like a cool pair of sunglasses, right? You know exactly what it is. It's no fluff, and that's kind of how I present. So uh, and these are the tactics. What, what I'm going to show you tonight is stuff that you can take home right away and start applying. These are real-world tactics. I've used every one of these. I've proven these. <clears throat> Social media is a tremendous amount of trial and error, and I was lucky enough to, uh, to have uh, a boss, I reported to the co-founder of Marketo, uh, and I kind of got to do whatever I wanted to, right? And, you know, I apologize lots of times, but uh, at the end of the day, <clears throat> it all worked out. So, let me start off by saying, your philosophical approach to social media is killing me. It's killing lots of people. I call it the social media Socrates, right? There's a golden age for everything. We have outlived this golden age of, of, of buzzwords and engagement, and you have to be authentic. Sure, that's important, but we're beyond that now, right? It's time to get to some hardcore metrics. And why are we doing this anyway? This is a staff of the B2B folks, right? This is Kramer doing movie phone. Why don't you just tell me the name of the movie you selected? We're not gonna, nobody's going to tell you. They are searching for that, and it's your job to have content in front of them to answer their questions, to let them know the problems they don't have uh, that you can solve, as well as the problems that you can solve that they do have that they're searching on, right? So, social's a way to get to them. And as mentioned, you better have content out there. Content fuels social, I'll get into that in a second, but you better, what the hell is a gigawatt, right? You better have, you better know what your audience is asking for, and you better be creating content to fuel your social campaigns based around that. ROI is social is no longer a mystery. We are beyond this. The technology is here. Anybody who says you can't get ROI from social is simply doing it wrong. They don't understand it. They're stuck in the golden age of the social man. Social, you know, it's time to move to the enlightenment. That's what I like to call it, the uh, metrics. Lead generation for social, right? This is, this is uh, uh, Lionel Richie. I don't have the rights to this, so I might get in trouble for this one. But the point is here, uh, lead generation is essential for social media, and it's moving very quickly, and if you're not doing it right now, and that's for B2B and B2C. I mean, the, the B2B people have the longer buying cycle, but the important thing <clears throat> is to know that social media leads do not come in a box. This was being pitched at 2 o'clock in the morning by some guy in an infomercial saying you could get $250,000 a month in Facebook, and it just from driving leads from Facebook, right? This is kind of silly stuff. This is an infomercial. Social media, social media leads do not come in a box. Rosetta Stone comes in a box. It works perfectly. I use it, right? A little Spanish. Donuts come in a box, not social media leads. And it leads to the people out there who are telling you that they are getting <laughs> tens and thousands of leads, right? Every month, tens and thousands of leads. Our social media is killing it. We're getting so many damn leads, we don't have to do with them. All leads are not created equal. A lead is not a lead if it does not fit your buying profile. What I'm saying is, if somebody, if you put some content out there using social to distribute your content, they fill out a form and down your, download your white paper or register for your event, if you don't score that person, that's just the name. If they're never going to buy from your company, if they don't fit your buyer's profile, that's not, a, that's not a lead, that's a name. And this is what I've learned in two years at Marketo, is that this is an interesting space, right? <clears throat> social media leads are not ready to buy, they're so top of funnel. They are way up here. They are very early on in the process. Jay Baer just put out a new book called, called Utility. It is the best book on content marketing and social and being helpful you can read today. This book is on my desk daily. It's a Bible for me, right? But the idea is, is to use social to reach these people very early on in their buying cycle, to help them, to always be helping them, get in, getting out of the mentality of always be closing and to always be helping. Uh, Jay Baer, B-A-E-R. <clears throat> so, this is, uh, this is interesting. This... Now, are you going to get a big ticket item sold directly from social? Uh, I like to say you'd have a better chance seeing Bigfoot witness a UFO landing, right? But, there have been sightings, am I right? <laughs> Thanks. Anyway, uh, I'm going to prove it. So, the idea here is, you're not going to get that big ticket. That, that's, that's more where the middle of the funnel stuff comes, right? That's the bottom of the funnel. What I'm talking about is getting in early and building these relationships and reaching these people very early on, right? And social is that channel, right? And they're moving, they're searching in Google, and they're looking for something very specific, but they're also searching social channels now. They're searching LinkedIn, they're searching uh, YouTube, they're searching Twitter. They're looking for, for peer to peers, their peers, to give them the info they need. And you can get a direct sale. I'm, I'm going to show you that in a little bit. But. 
<clears throat> so the idea here is to break, it, it's time to break down these silos, right? If you have social media working in a silo, and they're not communicating with PR, or content, or demand gen, or, uh, you, you, it's not making any sense. It's, the, it's time that we all, I mean, this is how we look at it, like, 2011 is the year of social, 2012 is the year of content, and 2013 is the year of integrated marketing. It's the year when everything comes together. It's the year where content, PR, and social all get together into one forward-thinking group. There's so much, like, so much crossover between PR, and content, and social, and the analysts, right? And they all need to come together because the siloed approach is, is leaving just that. Your, your, your campaign's in a silo, and you're not getting the results. So the idea here is to give every one of your campaigns a social lift. This is a full-on integrated marketing strategy, right? The blue is just your normal paid kind of stuff. The social lift is the stuff you get from adding on the shareable networks, the content, the pushing some, uh, some outbound behind this stuff. I'll show you about that. I'll tell you about that in a second. So bear with me, my allergies are killing me today. Uh, anybody have allergies? Something's going on today, I don't know what it is. Essentials for success. I've narrowed it down to these things. These are the essentials for success. If you want to get success from social for lead generation, or just in general, these are the things you need to be doing. I'm going to go through these individually really quick. Number one, inbound plus outbound equals awesomeness. What I'm saying here is inbound marketing is great, but alone it's not enough. Inbound is clearly not enough. You need to put some paid, it's time to pay to play, unfortunately. You have to put some paid behind your, behind your social campaigns. You absolutely have to. If you want to break through to the second degree, the coveted second degree connections, the friends of friends, you have to put some paid behind it. It doesn't have to be a fortune. You can just put, uh, you do some experimenting, but you must put some kind of paid behind it. If you're not, I kind of call it like hanging out with the same kind of, the same group of kids from kindergarten your whole goddamn life, right? Because you're not breaking through, you're not making any new connections. I guess that's a pretty bad analogy. Maybe I should re rethink that. But my idea is don't hang out with the same group of kids your entire life. High school would be better. I'm going to work that in next time. <laughs> this is what I like to call about putting some paid advertising behind your own good content. Mark that down. What works is the, the, the traditional advertising model is still it's still okay, but what really works is paying to promote your own good content and social. I call it releasing the Kraken. This is what happens. It's the power. It can really blow up. <coughs> Ready, aim, target. It's the, it's the targeting. It's the content, your own good targeting. And the technology that lets us like, target so specifically and make it a frictionless experience inside the news feed. The coveted news feed, what we're all trying to get, where everybody we're trying to reach is spending their time. The more we can get in that feed without looking like an advertisement, that is the holy grail of social media, uh, and that's what we all should be driving for. The 411 rule. <laughs> this is classic. This is coined by Joe Polizzi from the Content Marketing Institute, probably the smartest guy on the planet when it comes to content marketing. And what it says is, for every one self-serving tweet, you should retweet one relevant tweet, and most importantly, share four pieces of relevant content written by others. Basically what that's saying is, don't be the obsessive girlfriend. You want to uh, keep your strength, and this is, we, can, we use this for, at Marketo we use this for email marketing, we used it in our LinkedIn streams, we used it in our Facebook news feed, we used it everywhere. It's talking about not blasting, not broadcasting, right? That's like five years ago, that's the very beginning of social, that's what got us all into trouble in the first place, the broadcasting, and we need to move past that. Next rule, content is still king, I hate to say it, and it's so cliched, so I like to say the content is the whiz, and nobody beats the whiz. Come on, that was good. <laughs> the sign club? <clears throat> anyway. <clears throat> nobody beats the whiz because content fuels social. If you don't have content, uh, you are not going to have anything to put out there to talk about. Uh, you're not going to be able to do the 411 rule, you're not going to have any paid, paid strategies, you're not going to have any creation that demand gen is going to hate you, and your content team is probably non-existent. This is the idea here. If you're having trouble creating content, look around at what you have already and repurpose. This is uh, an analogy I borrow from uh, Rebecca Lee from the Altimeter Group. Uh, Rebecca Lee is one of the smartest content marketers on the planet, and she talks about content like Thanksgiving dinner, right? Thanksgiving turkey. You have this turkey, and what do you do after Thanksgiving? You eat off this thing for weeks. You repurpose the hell out of this turkey. <laughs> Same thing you can do with your content. Look around, see what you have. See, uh, get an old white paper, get a video. Chop the hell out of this thing. See if you can turn it into an infographic, a slideshow deck. Whatever you can do, uh, strangle that content and throw it on the side of the road. 
and wake and until there's no more value, and then you come back to it and say, I'll, I'll, you can resuscitate it. We'll talk about that too. <laughs> but the idea here is Motley Crue. This is Motley Crue, 1984. Yes. Right? I, lo I love these guys. I'm going to see these guys on Saturday night in Vegas, right? The idea here is that people are saying they're washed up. Who the hell is saying they're washed up? Not the two-week residency sold out at the Hard Rock in Vegas that's happening next weekend and that I'm going to. They're... There's always room for new audience. My point here being is that people like Motley Crue back then, and there's a whole new audience discovering that. The same thing can be said with your content, right? The content you're creating right now, or the content that I created two years ago, can be repurposed, updated, and, and turned into that turkey dinner, and sliced up in different ways to fuel your social. It's all out there, and you can never think of content as being washed up, right? Because Motley Crue's gonna be doing this for like 20 more years. <laughs> another, another tactic. <clears throat> Social signals influence Google. These things used to be called vanity metrics. Vanity metrics, man. We all looked, all the social media guys, we all looked like we didn't matter. We, our metrics suck. Nobody liked us. Nobody believed that our stuff was working, right? Well, then Google released Penguin 2.0 earlier this year. And what Google, Google's job is, as we all know, is to make sure that when you type in a search query, the most relevant thing shows up. Well, now they're taking social signals. So, the last, last I heard, it was 7 to 13% of your social signals are influencing your rankings, your content rankings on Google. So what that means to me, and to everyone here, is those comments, those plus ones, those likes, those retweets, everything is adding into relevance of the content that Google's looking at. The more social engagement your content has, the higher it's going to rank. Plus ones, I'll tell you a little secret about plus ones in a sec, but plus ones, if you're... If you're yep. If you're not playing, paying attention to plus ones, you're already behind. You need to get up on this stuff, right? So I'll show you a little secret here. This. How many people in the room have Google authorship implemented? Come on, I, I really need to see an accurate number. This is, this is pretty good. Google authorship is, if there's one thing you take away from this today, Google authorship. This is the most important thing you can do for your content and your social rankings all together. What this does is this tells Google that you care so much about your content that you're going to put your little picture on there and say, hey, I am proud of this content. I created this. It's going to help you rank better in Google. It's going to help you get more clicks. It's going to help you get more shares. How do you do this? There, there are these huge blog posts out there, like small ebooks, right, that teach you how to do this. And it's insane because it's very simple. I took three of these giant blog posts, and I sent them to my SEO team, and I said, dudes, I need an easy way. I need the dummies version of this. They gave me the email, funny enough, is anybody recording this? No. Really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the email actually said, Google authorship, the subject line was Google authorship for complete morons, because that's what I asked for, right? And it was two steps, two sentences. All you do, take your blog, link it back to your Google Plus profile, and link it back to your blog. Boom, boom, done. Easy enough. And these little guys rank better. They get 12% more clicks. 12% more clicks for putting your face on there. Plus, you get to show up underneath Jeremiah Allen, right? This is, this is something I wrote two years ago. It's still ranking there because, uh, because it was on a blog with authority and because I implemented Google authorship. And they give me right underneath Wikipedia. It's crazy. That's a real ranking. <clears throat> Here's a little secret. I took this screenshot before I left today. This is uh, Kickstart My Content, is what I call it. Motley Crue, I'm searching for Motley Crue. What shows up? There are two Google Plus <coughs> things right there. That is page one rankings. This is not even my personalized results. This is page one rankings for anybody who searches on Motley Crue right now. And how does that happen? Because somebody with some page rank, if you have a page rank of about six on Google Plus, Google Plus pages have page rank, by the way. If you have a page rank above six, that means that whoever shares a piece of your content, it can rank on page one in Google. Is that crazy? So if you're a PR person, if you're a startup, and you're trying to get all things D to write about you, and they won't touch you, or you're just not big enough for them, just get somebody from all things D, or somebody with a page rank above six to plus one or share your article. All you need, three days, boom. That's, that's page one, it's crazy. Another tactic that I found very successful. This is the KISS Army. I'm an honorary member. I have a card in my pocket. I've been a member for like six months. <laughs> anyway, my point being is that Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley figured out a way to get people to do the job for them, right? 
They created the KISS Army. You can do the same. It's very simple, right? You, you know, how many of those people have a company where you have people who want to tweet, but you have such strict, strict guidelines or update your, your, your uh, company news to your LinkedIn profile, but they don't know what to share, they don't know what they can share with, they don't know what they can get away with, they don't know what to talk about, yada, yada, yada. There's two tools. Uh, Advocate, which is started by Marcus Nelson here in the city, and another one called Gagalan. These are just a couple of examples of ways you can pull these advocates together into one platform and it makes it easy. So you load up a queue of all of the content you want to share that's been approved, and then your employees just sign up and they can auto tweet, they can auto post to their, to their LinkedIn profiles. What was that one? Gaggle AMP. G A G G L E AMP. So, <clears throat> but the idea here is this is genius, right? Because now you control the messaging. You don't control everything that people tweet about because they sign and they have free authority. It looks completely natural. You can buffer it out, you can schedule it out, you can tweet it live, you can update your Facebook page live or your LinkedIn page live. You can do all this and it, this is what is going to give you those social signals, those super important social signals which are going to help your content and help your virality and help when people are searching. You know, this is a big deal. There's a little known fact that a well-known, uh, a well-optimized uh, uh, LinkedIn profile page has a, a little tiny uh, effect on SEO. There's room on your LinkedIn page. It's a little plug, but it's true. Everybody should be doing this anyway. <clears throat> There's room to link back to your blog. Not just your blog, but you can put a custom keyword in there and link back to your blog. You can update keywords in your title. If you put uh, just a keyword in your title, your description, your job description, that's going to give you a little SEO juice. Now, if you can get your whole damn company to update their profiles and publish to them daily with keywords and the content you're trying to share, that is a huge lift. Think about that, man. That is SEO combined with social signals, combined with content di distribution, combined with social. Put a couple landing page links in there, a couple of event signups. You got ROI, man. There's your ROI of social right there. There's no, there's no more, no more mystery. <clears throat> How about some free links? Yes, I'll take them. This is the hell is this? This is uh, oh, this is YouTube. You should know that. <clears throat> These are. Specific links, these are free links on, on your front page of your company's uh, YouTube account, right? How many people use this? This is, but this is cool. You might th be thinking to yourself, who the hell is going to come to my YouTube page and click through to a link there? Well, I'll tell you what, it's, these are very specific links. These are very specific keywords. So even though it's going to be very low traffic, the traffic that's going to be coming to you is so focused that it's probably going to convert at 10 times what it normally would. These are free links. This is autopilot, man. If you're not doing this, this is low-hanging fruit. That's a buzzword that needs to go away, by the way. I mean, I just said that. <laughs> How about some more free links? Google Plus. This is your Google Plus about page, man. Google doesn't give anything away for free, right, when it comes to links. These are free links. Same thing, linking opportunities. These are going to very specific keywords, going to landing pages that we had created already. So when somebody lands there, this is a landing page. You're not sending them to a blog post or something. This is a very specific search. Keywords. These keywords let you know, let Google know what your company's about. This is very serious stuff. This is your SEO. This is what you want your brand to be known about. This is what your company does. These are the most important things you can tell Google about your company, and it's free. Google Plus gets all these jokes. There's always that meme that comes around and says, want to see a real graveyard this Halloween? Go see Google Plus. That's bullshit, right? Google Plus, they're not letting this die, man. They're going to force you. They're going to force us marketers to pay attention to this. And I'm, I'm a fan. I think they're doing a pretty good job. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm a fan of LinkedIn as well. But <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day, my point is Google Plus is important. Pay attention to it. Welcome to the funnel. We got leads and names. Come on, that's pretty good. Really. <laughs> so here's the moment of truth. What is the highest... Which social channel provides the highest ROI? Anyone want to take a guess? Google Plus. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? This one turns your content and your social up to 11. It's the sleeping giant of lead gen. It's super important. And it's a little guy, a little guy called SlideShare, right? Visual content. I'm going to get into visual content in a second. This, these are real numbers, man. This is, I put this together. Now, this is where we take repurposing to a whole new level. This is called How to Build a Better Inbound Marketing Machine. It is a custom slideshow deck that I paid $5,000 for based on an old white paper. The white paper had 17,000 views. I took the same content 
and turn it into a visual piece of content, a visual self-guided journey on SlideShare with a lead form capture edit, right? <clears throat> These are the actual results. I did this three times, this is not a fluke, with the same exact results. We spent almost $5,000. 7,400 successes, that means 7,400 people viewed this whole damn thing and filled out the form. That's very specific. This is a form at the end of a presentation. That means they got to the end of their journey, they wanted more. This is not just a top of funnel name thing, right? Cost per success, under a dollar. It's like, it's like the dollar store for lead generation, but, <coughs> but it's like a Nordstrom's, right? Because this is quality stuff. Is that even possible? I don't know. But look at that. So we take it down from successes to new names. How many new names did this generate for us? How many new names did it pull into our database? 4,482. Uh, again, barely a dollar for cost. It's, it's, this is incredible. This is, and this is on autopilot. You can sync this up with your marketing automation platform, so when they get to that little lead form at the end and they fill that out, it syncs it directly into Marketo or Eloqua or, or HubSpot, whatever you're using, scores them, sends them a follow-up email, that's closed loop marketing with a real ROI, and on top of it, it's visual content, uh, it's a new channel, it's integrated, let me show you how you can integrate this stuff. Prepare, <laughs> have your mind blown. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get to that integration in a second because I got some cool slideshow stuff coming up. But this, Remember I was talking about the, uh, the Bigfoot watch in the UFO landing? This is, <laughs> this is a tweet that led to a $17,000 deal. I call it the $17,000 tweet. This is from Marketo. I was at Marketo just a couple months ago. I'm still new at LinkedIn. But think about that. First touch attribution. This person found our content on Twitter, clicked on it, and went straight into Pipeline. And three months later, you can see the touch points. They became a customer. That's a customer from Twitter. There's your ROI again, right? It's easy to do. Put a link in a Twitter ad. Boom, put a link in a LinkedIn company page. <clears throat> we posted three organic posts a day to LinkedIn. One of those had a link in it to a landing page to an offer. We drove $66,000 in pipeline, month over month, from organic. Now you can put you know, paid amplification behind that on LinkedIn as well. But the idea is find what works and then scale it with the budget, but you have to have somebody dedicated to this because this is this stuff takes work, man. You know, you got to find the right offers, lots of trial and error. But this does happen, and it's going to it's going to happen more and more as social becomes that more important channel for people to search on. As they move away from search engines, as they move away from Google, they're going to go somewhere, and it's going to be social. This is kind of boring, but it's essential. This is how your content fits in to your social strategy, right? <clears throat> this is demand gen one on one stuff, early stage. Uh, you know, funny videos, curated lists, infographics, thought leadership, blog posts. That's early stage stuff. Don't want to gate that. Or very early stage stuff. Uh, number two, middle stage stuff. This is where you start to get a little bit of interest. This is where you got the people interested, they're moving down the funnel, they're getting closer to becoming an opportunity. Not a customer, an opportunity, if you will. This is where the more specific stuff, ROI calculators, buying guides, very specific content. If this, is the, this is the always be helping stuff, right? This is the education, and then this is, we got them locked in, man, let's close this deal, right? That's the bottom line, that's the demos. But you can also do some targeting with, with uh, social as well, some very specific targeting in uh, LinkedIn and Facebook. But um, <laughs> my point being, you can take your social all along the funnel, as long as you have the right content to push out. Very important, when you start getting that content, and the content purist, let me correct myself, the content purist will tell you to never gate top of funnel stuff. I'm here to tell you there's something else. That was Prince reference. Prince reference, if anyone got that from Purple Rain, 1986. Anyway, short forms, this is kind of a given, but here's the metrics. This is from Marketo, by the way, their data. Short forms outperform long forms. This little guy up here, the short form, you can see the conversion rate was higher, the cost per conversion was lower. The idea here is if you're going to gate that thing up in social, in the very top of funnel, and I say go ahead. If it's a really solid offer, it's very specific, or even if it's broad, I guess it could go either way. If you're putting paid behind it, pump a little money behind it, if the content piece is of value and it's in the right channel, hitting these people at the right time, short form, okay. The perfect social landing page. A couple of different things. It has a little uh, social emblem to let them know they are at the right place. They came in from a channel, it's like, hey, 
I know where you came in from. This is very specific to you. Number two, social sign-on. One click, I can, I can download this form with one click. I don't even need the damn form. Uh, and then I can share it. I can turn on the peer-to-peer. -peer. That's where the real power comes in. You can incentivize that, of course, but this is the perfect landing page. Very simple, to the point. Content, social sign-on. We know where you came from. And please share. This is the fun stuff. <clears throat> this is where I'm at right now, right? Not, I'm not uh, the kittens and bacon thing, but the idea here is that visual is the new headline. If you want to get somebody's attention, we all know about visual content marketing, right? We did this for years at Marketo. We had huge success, and now uh, it's starting to catch on. But the idea is the visual is the new headline. David Ogle used to talk about uh, you're the first 85 cents of your dollar spent on your headline, right? On, on, on crafting a headline. Well, I say that applies equally uh, to, to, a piece of, to a visual, because you have two seconds to grab somebody's attention and pull them into the rest of your content. And why is that? Because we are all visual thinkers. 75% of these sensory neurons in our brain process visual information. <laughs> that, I forgot that one. <laughs> anyway, my point being, this is where we're all heading. You have two seconds to catch somebody's attention. Have a good visual. Tie it back to something. Or have an entire visual piece of content. We'll talk about that in a second. These are the experts. This is going back to SlideShare. I really wanted to push on this because SlideShare is viewed upon as, uh, as a content repository. It can be that, but it's also, this is the visual content publishing platform. This is the place where you can establish yourself as a thought leader with visual content. Here's the experts, man. Meet the experts. Marketo, we, did, we took an ebook that I wrote and turned it into a visual presentation, and then uh, SlideShare put it on their homepage for us. You know why? Because it was a nice little partnership. They wanted content. Uh, they wanted something. They wanted a case study from us. But it, was, it wasn't an instruction manual. It was a, a strategic guide for using a SlideShare with real-world examples. But it was a visual piece of content. This is super hot. Uh, SEO Moz, same thing. They rule SEO and visual content. If you search SEO or SEO optimization or search and not, you spell it out, whatever, they rank high. They get everything. HubSpot, again, these guys use it all the time. This is, uh, and it's free. It's free to get a SlideShare channel. Uh, and you can get creative with, with the way you present these things. You don't need a, a thousand dollars to, you know, create a, a, a have, have a designer do this. You can do this yourself. Just you have to be a little bit creative. This is one of my favorites. <clears throat> Kevin Baldici from uh, Desk.com made this thing. This is very top of funnel. This is very always be helping, but it's cool because people love this. 50 customer quotes you need to hang in your office. Basically what this is, is it's 50 quotes from, from Steve Jobs, from Gandhi, you name it, but they're inspiring quotes. People want to be inspired at the top of the funnel. They want to get to like your company. They want to build that relationship with your company so that when, when they need your products, you'll be top of mind. Staying top of mind in social is terribly underrated. We all know that. But this thing got 246,000 views, man. That's crazy. Kevin put this together himself. Uh, I'll show you a little cool thing he did on the inside, too, to make it go viral. Oh, by the way, this really pisses me off. The infographic is not dead. Claiming that something is dead is dead. Infographics are fine. They're alive and well. Bad infographics have always been dead. They don't make any sense. If you're going to make an infographic, don't just make an infographic. Have some purpose behind it. Infographics drive SEO. They drive virality. They drive sharing. They can get you a PR hit. They can take a boring PR story and turn it into something very interesting. But you have to just, you have to have some goals in mind. Do, don't do 10 info, infographics a month. Do one infographic a month with some strategy behind it. Reach out. You, there, there's, like, there's tons of services you can, do, you can use to find the most influential people in your space, right? Type in a keyword into uh, Tracker, Little Bird, whatever, and find that. And, see, and reach out to these people. See what they're looking for. See what type of content you can create for them that they want to share. And then... You know, seed your, con seed your own content with their thoughts. I mean, this is, this is essential, easy stuff. We, we like to call it ego bait. And don't forget that Google crawls SlideShare, too. So if you're having trouble ranking for something, there's some very competitive keywords out there. What if you could have the edge with a successful SlideShare? That way you can. This first page results. Hell yes, it is. Look at that. Visual content marketing. I made a visual SlideShare deck on visual content marketing, and it ranked. That's Crazy. But look at that, man. Inbound marketing. We made one deck on inbound marketing, but we used it cross-functionally, and it did so well 
that we rank number one. This SlideShare is also a search engine, and people are searching in there because they're looking for content as well. Uh, it, it's incredible how, how, much, how much you can get out of one piece of content repurposed this many ways. Now, this is cool. Anybody know what that is? Kill me. I'm going to Vegas this weekend. This is my Chris, Vegas trip. Chris, the magician? <laughs> it's Chris Angel. All right, yeah, he's a little silly, and I get it, but I, I think he's great. Anyway, but my idea here is this is, this is visual content, social, integrated marketing at its finest. And I'm sorry I keep using Marketo examples, but I've got to be honest with you, man. There wasn't a lot of people doing this stuff, so. SlideShare, you can see right here, in the blog, integrates perfectly. You can view it inside the blog. You can track the links. You can track who's linking back to it. You can track the views. You can track everything you want to uh, inside your blog post. This is inside of a landing page, the second one there. Inside of a landing page out there, living and breathing outside of your website, outside of SlideShare, but still tracking and still engaging. Incredibly powerful, especially for email marketing, right? And then <clears throat> that is Twitter. SlideShare renders beautifully in Twitter. So the experience is right there. No clicking, no, uh, no. oh, Instagram, I'm gonna shut you down, I have to click to something else that nobody ever looks at, right? This is right inside the feed. And then I'm gonna hit it like this. My bonus round, it's called, you might ask yourself, why did I think of that? <laughs> That's the talking heads. David, David Byrne. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, some little cool tricks that I've seen uh, from SlideShare, because I'm a big fan of SlideShare. Number one, promoting your event, check. 13, this is genius, man. I love the folks at HubSpot. 13 reasons to come to Boston. That's a beautiful visual deck. And they can, I'm, I'm assuming they brought some photos and probably didn't have the rights to all this stuff, but who, who cares, right? It's, it's a great way to, and this thing embeds everywhere, so it's a great visual way to engage your audience. Oh, I love this. I, could, I happen to find these two. I wasn't really looking too hard. <clears throat> this company here is called Slides That Rock, and uh, they, all they do is like create really cool slideshow decks, but they came up with a way to, when you're, when you're flipping through this, they, one of the slides is a, uh, a little 20% off code. Right inside, <coughs> oh, whatever is that? I never would have thought about that. I'm not that smart, but these guys figured this out. That's awesome, man. I mean, and, and then again, just trackable social media, super simple. This guy, <laughs> I don't know how much time he spent designing this, probably not much at all, but it was a visual journey through his frequently asked questions, right? He just took the most frequently asked questions from our sales reps and uh, from customer service reps, whatever, which we all should be doing to create our content anyway. Uh, and he basically just made a visual journey of it. Oh, and then he put inside, there's, there's engagement, right? He put his own little, <laughs> kind of a, a hard hashtag to remember, but, but the idea here is people have a question, they tweeted that, he's monitoring that, boom, it's interactive, it's live, it's real time, it's real time content, man, that's cool. And back to that one I showed you about desk.com. Uh, inside of SlideShare, <coughs> past, I think it's slide six, you can put little links in there. A little secret. What Kevin did was he hacked into it and put a little tweet bird there, so when you liked one of these uh, customer service quotes, you could tweet it out, and it's instant virality, and it's fun, and it's inspiring. People see this in the moment, like, oh, that's cool. I want to share that, because I, that's what I believe in, right? It's awesome, it's cool. I did it. And uh, I'll leave you that. Rock out with your slide share out. Uh, this is Ozzy Osbourne on tour Black Sabbath. Um, so anyway. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I just wanted to say, um, again, thanks to uh, Artist Ventures and, and MindJet for having me. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's all I got for you. So thank you. Can you take a few questions? What? Can you take a few questions? Sure. Anybody got? Uh, just a form, something you had to fill out at the very end. And I assume it was going to be the incentive for you to fill it out. The incentive to fill it out? The incentive for them to fill that out would be simply to learn more, right? Uh, or if they wanted to download. So you can download that entire presentation. Uh, you know, I should have put this up on SlideShare. Eat my own dog food, right? But um, yeah, you can download the full presentation, uh, or you can just learn more about the company. What, what is the URL for? Is your, is your, are you on SlideShare? I am. I'm, I'm uh, SlideShare front slash Jason Miller CA. And feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you just search Jason Miller on LinkedIn, uh, just put a little high in there or something, because uh, I don't carry business cards. Because I work at LinkedIn. <laughs> anyway. So from a social perspective, where is LinkedIn going with all of this? Because it's, um, I, I've been following LinkedIn for a while, and I've got to tell you, I'm confused. <laughs> uh, well, it's interesting. I mean, I, I, LinkedIn is divided up into three divisions. So there's talent solutions, 
There's sales solutions and there's marketing solutions. I work specifically on the marketing solutions team, so I market to marketers. But the idea is uh, there are so many opportunities for marketers on LinkedIn that weren't there two years ago. So we're moving towards uh, a content marketing and publishing platform with the influencers campaign, um, all the content we have there. Our job is to you know, inspire and educate and make people better at their jobs. So we're you know, redefining that algorithm and we're putting content in there based on their uh, on the richness of their profile and who they follow, who they engage with, uh, and that's where we're moving. I mean, we're moving, and, and it, with, well, within that is an opportunity for marketers to get their content in there and, and target it very specifically, right? Okay. Yeah? How often do you suggest you're using full content? Uh, again, the uh, strangle the Sopranos approach, right? You strangle it and lifeless on the side of the road. I mean, that's really a bad analogy. I shouldn't say that. Uh, but again, I mean, I think of it like this. You take one white paper. Oh, here's a really great analogy, right? So I was at Content Market World a couple uh, last year, and Marketo creates these uh, definitive guides, these huge definitive guides, like 100 pages, right? It's called the Definitive Guide to Social Marketing. I wrote uh, one of these with, with the co-founder and a couple other folks there. But the idea was this guy comes up to me at Content Market World and goes, dude, I love your content, but there's too much value there. And I'm like, who the hell marketer ever downloaded something and said, there's too much value here, I'd like to give this back to you. But he was taking a very short-sighted approach to it, right? So I say, that should be the question, how much should I repurpose? But create something, we call it a big rock piece of content. Put a stake in the ground with the, the definitive guide to whatever the hell your company wants to talk about. You know, something you want to own. And write it not like a product manual or an instruction manual, more like a strategic guide. This is very top of funnel, always be helping Jay Bear stuff, right? And then, once you get, even if it's 50 pages, then you chop the hell out of that, which, which, which is what we do with the definitive guides. So out of one definitive guide that's 85 pages, we'll get uh, 25 blog posts, four thought leadership interviews, two videos, four infographics, two webinars, et cetera, et cetera, so, oh, five cheat sheets. We'll get enough content out of this one big stake in the ground to fuel our efforts for an entire quarter. And then we just wash, rinse, and repeat. So social content is at the, so high up at the top of the funnel, how long should we expect to be writing content? Uh, like what kind of a lead time is there until you see an effect on your business from writing content? Uh, well, there's two ways you can look at that. Number one, you need to know how SEO affects your content, right? You need to know who's coming to your, you need to know who's coming to your site, what they're searching on. You need both keywords that are branded and non-branded. And uh, yeah, so I would do a full kind of keyword analysis. This is kind of long, I'll give you the short version. You get to do a full keyword analysis, uh, and then from top of funnel to middle of funnel, if you have like a six month sales cycle, social leads take a little bit longer, uh, I don't know, three to four months. But if you're doing it right, and you find some low hanging fruit, if you find some long tail keyword phrases and create a couple blog posts, maybe an ebook or something on that, or SlideShare deck, whatever, and you can have low competition there, you can get those back. Those are the quick wins, man. The CMOs love that. So you show a couple of quick wins like that, say, hey, we're on, we were on page eight in Google, I wrote three pieces of content, now we're on page one for a very low competitive thing. Then you get the ammo to go in and go after the big dogs, right? So, uh, but the, the question is, <clears throat> don't give up. Just like social, we all know, like, you don't get any results, you gotta keep hacking at this stuff. So, uh, but you can get some early wins and you can get some buy-in, I think you're, I think you're golden. Yeah? What are those link sources you listed out before do you follow? Oh, like, was uh, what? LinkedIn and the YouTube link, uh, link opportunities. Uh, that's a good question. I don't know that. I, I would imagine. Uh, I would imagine so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't quote me on that, but I would say yes. Okay. I mean, I I would guess it's not a blog comment section, right? They want the juice. They want you to pay attention. So I would absolutely say it's a follow. Do you have any favorite tools you were using? I mean, <clears throat> for your $16,000 sale, it looked like you were tracking over a lot of different channels over quite a while. Uh, that was Marketo specific. Uh, that's the, and that's the other thing, right? <clears throat> you need something to track all this stuff. So whether or not you're using Marketo, or um, you need some project management too, so uh, MindJet's great for that. Uh, keep everybody <laughs> together and, and do some publishing, right? It's cool stuff. But uh, you need a platform, you need something to track this. And, and the way, when I say, you know, track social directly from, um, or track ROI directly from social, it's all about doing the 411 rule with specific landing pages uh, and links. So, you, so the reason we got all those numbers was because we did original source. So we knew 
every time somebody filled out a form or somebody came to our website and, and converted on something, we knew where the original source of that was. So you track that across two things. You track that from a multi-touch, this is going to be really boring, I'm going to try to make this as exciting as possible. There's first touch attribution and there's multi-touch attribution. The first touch attribution means that all of your leads get, uh, get um, counted with the first touch. Whoever touched that, that goes all the way through to revenue, right? That approach sucks for social. If you use the multi-touch, then you can see how social affects the buying cycle. You know, what, was really, what was really interesting is we found out that uh, SlideShare accelerates the sales funnel. The middle funnel is really great for middle funnel stuff, right? Because people are searching and they find something specific. Um, but yeah, it, it's, the technology is out there. You need to be tracking the source of the stuff and you need to be tracking how it affects your buying cycle, how these people are coming to your site, what they're engaging with, uh, the referral traffic back from these non-branded keywords. That's how you tell whether or not your social is working. So, please, well, firstly, I hope you enjoy your time in Las Vegas and Thanks. have a good time. Get the special cocktail. Nobody cares about Molly Cruz. It's, it's a pretty giant cocktail. <laughs> um, given your fantastic presentation, thank you. And uh, I really liked it. Um, if content is king, then I guess social is queen. You could say that. I mean, without without content, you can't push social. Sure, I get it. It fuels um, it, yeah. I, I run an agency and I work a lot of brands. I've done the Google experiment um, in the early stages. I've it works, seen, right? I've seen a 300% rise in click-through rates. That's awesome, yeah. Having said that, I did an offline campaign with a postcard. Hey, man, inbound plus outbound. Outbound, direct mail. We do direct mail all the time. Direct mail is cool. I, I, I like just getting mail. I, I did see a conversion rate as well from um, an outbound with just a simple postcard to CMOs in LA. So. I have to agree, it's fantastic, and you're right. I mean, you're the only one who would miss it. Well, thank you. I mean, that's, uh, he was basically just saying that he used a, a direct mail campaign to reach a CMO. And I'll tell you what, if you can get a CMO, you're a better man than I am, right? So that's, that's cool. That's cool stuff. I don't know if I reach. I reach a few, but I know they clicked on it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, I, I, I want to respect everyone's time, so uh, any other questions? Uh, yeah. Really stupid, but can you go over and hand the... Plus one technique. This is what this. You mean by that exactly? uh, what I'm saying basically is uh, with with Google releasing Penguin 2.0, all these social signals uh, they mean something now. Uh, but not only the social signals. So you can't just get something and retweet it 150 times from a fake account. It has to be from people who are actually authentic people. Uh, so not only the social signals, but how much influence the people have that uh, are sharing that piece of content. And when it gets to Google specifically on the plus one stuff, this is from this is from experimenting trial and error, right? This isn't written down anywhere. Um, but Google profiles, Google pages have pro, uh, have page rank. Well, Google Plus profiles have page rank too. They don't tell you that, and you got to do a little hacking to get it out of there. Uh, there's a couple. I think Lifehacker or TechCrunch has an article on it, maybe Copyblogger. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, if you can figure out who has uh, that that high of a page rank in Google Plus and get them to share or plus one something of yours, then that can be up on I mean, anything, here, here's, let me just sum like this. Anything, this is a fact, anything that is shared on Google Plus can show up on the first page of Google in rankings. So uh, just one quick thing. If you guys, uh, I mean, everything that I learned, I learned